In the previous segment, we talked about temperature as a factor and we have seen how this temperature affects the rate of enzymatic action. Now let us talk about the second factor and that is pH. pH is basically the hydrogen ion concentration in a medium. Most of the enzymes, they work near neutral pH, but there are specific enzymes which have their optima pH. So we'll take a couple of examples of these enzymes and see what is their optimum pH. Say salivary amylase. It is found in saliva. It is a starch or a carbohydrate digestive enzyme. Second example is pepsin. And third we can take off trypsin. All these enzymes, they have their optimum pH. Salivary amylase has its op optimum pH as 6.8. That means 7 is neutral, slightly below neutral or we can say it is slightly acidic. And this pH is available in our saliva. This is the pH of our saliva. That's why this enzyme gets that optimum pH and works at, at its best efficiency. Pepsin, it works in the stomach where hydrochloric acid is uh, responsible for creating that acidic pH and the pH which is optimum for this is 1.2 to 1.8 highly acidic. Trypsin works in the intestinal part and where the medium is alkaline or basic. So the optimum pH is 8.6 to 8.8 that means different enzymes have different optima pH. So here we will write different enzymes have different optima pH. But if you are able to recall what happened when we were talking about temperature. Our body temperature is a suboptimum temperature for all the enzymes of our body. But as soon as the temperature increases, the enzymatic activity comes to optimum. That means all enzymes have the same optimum temperature, but the enzymes have different optimum pH. This can be written as different enzymes have different uh, optimum pH or we can also write it as pH optima. And if we have to add the temperature part here, then all enzymes of our body have same temperature optima. That means the temperature at which they have their optimum activity is same for all enzymes. Whereas each enzyme has its different pH optima. That is the optimum pH. And when the pH is that optimum, the enzymatic activity is maximum. pH below this if it goes below this, then enzymatic activity will decrease. If it goes above it, then also the enzymatic activity would decrease. And this change or this decrease in activity is due to denaturation. As beyond the optimum pH, that change in the ion, hydrogen ion especially, is responsible for denaturation of the enzyme. This is the second factor. Now the third factor is concentration of substrate or we also write it as substrate concentration as a factor. To understand this, we'll take an example. An enzyme normally has many active sites. So each enzyme molecule has many active sites. This enzyme is going to bind with a substrate molecule. For example, we say here there are 1000 active sites of one enzyme molecule. That means there are 1000 places where these substrate molecules can go and bind. As soon as the substrate concentration increases, how the reaction or rate of reaction would change. If we have 100 substrate molecules, we initially, we just want less product to be synthesized. 
then all those 100 substrates would be converted into 100 product molecules. We go on increasing the substrate concentration. We make it 200. The active sites are available for all these 200 molecules to bind. So there would be 200 product molecules synthesized. We bring it to 500, we get 500 product. We bring it to 1000, we get 1000 product molecules synthesized. We increase it beyond this 1000. Say we make it 1100. How many active sites are available? Only 1000. So as soon as there are 1000 substrate molecules, all those active sites are occupied. So no matter what is the extra substrate molecule, unless and until the active sites are set free, no new substrate can bind. That means here again, the product formation would be 1000. That means if we plot a graph to represent the rate of enzymatic action when the substrate concentration is increasing, we are incre this is substrate concentration and here we are talking of enzymatic action. As we increase the substrate concentration in this direction, the rate of enzymatic activity goes up. At a particular substrate concentration, we find that the rate of the enzymatic action becomes steady. This is that substrate concentration where all the active sites of the enzyme molecule are blocked or occupied. So here no active site is free. If there is no active site free, you go on increasing the substrate concentration. The substrate would not have any uh, empty active site available. So the rate of enzymatic activity is going to get steady. So what is the effect of substrate concentration of enzyme, uh, on enzymatic action? With increase in substrate concentration, the rate of enzymatic activity increases and then it becomes steady. So this is the point where all active sites are occupied. And that is why in spite of increasing substrate molecules or concentration, there is no increase in the enzymatic rate, oh sorry, rate of enzymatic action. We will interpret this graph in terms of Michaelis constant. So let us see how we can interpret it in a slightly different manner. We will draw the same graph here and now we will talk in terms of the velocity and Michaelis constant. Here we are doing the same thing. This is the substrate concentration and it is increasing in this manner. For our understanding, we will write certain values here. And on this side, we are writing the enzyme action or which is written as velocity of the reaction. This is basically talking about the rate of enzymatic action. Let us draw this. Here say we are talking of concentration of 1 gram, 2 gram, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. As the concentration of the substrate increases, the rate of enzymatic action increases and at a certain concentration it becomes steady. Let us bring it down to see at what concentration it is becoming maximum. It is coming to somewhere 5.3 uh, grams. That means at this concentration, the velocity or the reaction speed is maximum. It is written as V max. So this is we represent it with velocity of reaction, but here actually we are talking about the rate of reaction. We write it as Vmax. What does this indicate? This indicates that at a concentration of 5.3 grams, all the active sites of the enzyme are fully occupied. And beyond that, if the concentration of substrate is increased, there is no increase in the enzymatic action or velocity. 
So this is the maximum rate. So we call it V max. Now when we talk of maximum velocity, we can also find out half. So half of this concentration, 5, half of 5 would be 2.5 and little more. So somewhere here, we would get half of the V max. This is going to be written as this velocity and half of that concentration is written as half of V max. Half of V max is also represented as Km or Michaelis constant. Michaelis constant. Many a times in the examination, this graph is given and interpretation of the graph is the question. Now what most common question they have asked is, they draw the same diagram or same graph, only difference is they would make two lines. This is enzyme A and one more graph which is going to show the second enzyme action. Say this is the second one. So this is enzyme B. And the question would be which enzyme has higher affinity towards the substrate. Let us write down the Vmax and half of Vmax in case of enzyme B. Here is the maximum point attained. So this is going to be the Vmax for enzyme B. And if we calculate the half of Vmax, it is coming to 3.5. So half of 3, 1.5 and little bit here. This is going to be around this concentration. It's going to be half of V max or Michaelis constant. So this is going to be the Michaelis constant Km for enzyme B. And this is half of V max. This red point is Michaelis constant for enzyme A. Now, what exactly is uh, the question? The question is which, is which enzyme is having higher affinity? Affinity means the attraction of that substrate molecule towards the enzyme or the active site. It can be easily interpreted sooner the active sites get full, higher is the affinity. And we interpret it from Michaelis constant. At low Michaelis constant, we are talking about this second enzyme that is B, whose Michaelis constant is just before 2 grams. At this concentration, half of its sites are full. Whereas for enzyme A, at around 2.7 grams, half of the sites are full. So sooner the sites get full or half full, higher is the affinity. That means lower the Michaelis constant, higher is the affinity. Higher is the affinity of the substrate and enzyme. So out of these two, B enzyme has lower Michaelis constant. That means this enzyme and its substrate, they have higher affinity. A has higher Michaelis constant as compared to this. So comparatively, it has lower affinity towards the substrate. So Lower the Michaelis constant, higher is the affinity. Higher the Michaelis constant, lower is the affinity. So such kind of graphical interpretation questions are also asked in competitive exams. So our factor was concentration of substrate or what is the effect of substrate concentration on the enzymatic action. In simple language, we can say with increasing substrate concentration, the rate of enzymatic activity increases and then it becomes steady. The concentration at which it becomes steady means all the active sites are occupied. And this is the other type of interpretation where we are using some technical terms like maximum velocity and half of maximum and this uh, half of Vmax is known as Michaelis constant. So this is how we will interpret this graph which is based on 